What is up the people of the YouTuberverses? Welcome back to the channel and today uh, we're taking a break from SX and Civic stuff. <laughs> um, today we're going to be working on this, I think it's a 2009 Ford Ranger. Um, it's going to be slightly different from what we normally do but it's still more DIY stuff. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building a custom or not a custom but a DIY um, bed cover. Um, I don't know how you pronounce it, to no, to no cover. To no. To no. Someone can tell me in the comments. But yeah, we're going to be building one of those uh, for under $100 for the rest of um, everyone else. Uh, well, well, for South Africans, that's uh, <laughs> under a thousand rand. Um, yeah, these covers generally range anywhere from 200 to like $500 um, around that range so we're gonna be trying to build it ourselves um, I'll outline all the materials but first off we need to start off by getting this thing clean because uh, as you can see this car is just a workhorse right so um, every now and then you're gonna see us uh, working on this car uh, it's not gonna be an ongoing thing but it will be every now and then we'll start doing things on this car because this car is mostly just a workhorse right so it just does what it needs to do and we carry on with life with it um, but yeah so Without any ado, let's get started by getting this thing cleaned up a little bit. to firstly get our dimensions drawn out um, exactly of the perimeter of the van itself or, um, and then we also marked out where the roll bar bars are situated and all the dimensions around those so that was the next step that we did there uh, the materials we're going to be using is a black outdoor top right um, this was purchased at a fabric shop um, I could have gotten the tarpaulin, oh, well, not tar sorry, I could have gotten the tonneau cover, tonneau, tonneau, however you say it. I could have gotten that actual fabric. Um, the only difference was, uh, this came in three meter sections and this was like $15, uh, per meter. So all I needed was two meters with a three meter width. Um, versus the tonneau cover coming in at one meter sections at $32 roughly a section um, so yeah this is much cheaper uh, to get this so once this is actually built we're actually gonna see how long this lasts because this is gonna be outside all day every day in the Sun in the cold in the rain and everything so in the next year I will do a review on how long or how well this has lasted um, but yeah so that's the fabric we're going to be using it is just the black top cover we then have some cotton tape um, this is double-sided cotton tape that we're going to run along the edge so that when we do our folds it actually stays in place when we're about to do the stitching itself um, next we have um, velcro with a sticky backing on it right so this is gonna the first side is gonna stick to the actual top itself the other side is gonna stick to the bed itself um, we're also gonna put some rivets through it in the bed just to ensure that that doesn't get pulled up even though this is really sticky um, and then just as an extra precaution we have snap fasteners or essentially buttons uh, we'll be putting roughly six of these around um, so one on each corner and then one in the centers uh, lengthways right so that's what we got there we've got our dimensions next up this is also just a piece of um, straight edge that we're going to be using just to get our line straight so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take the dimension of the bed I'm going to map it out but I'm going to add in 25 millimeters on either side right reason being is our velcro is 25 millimeters thick and the actual bed is 25 millimeters thick um, 
the steel surrounding it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add on 25 millimeters. We're going to fold the corners in and then that is going to get stuck together with the double sided tape. Um, and then the Velcro will go on the inside of it and we'll sew that all as a single seam. I don't know if it makes sense uh, in what I'm saying there, but yeah, we're just adding in 25 millimeters on either end so that that can fold over and then it will be the correct size um, after the fact. So let me put that on a time lapse and we'll start measuring out and cutting and then we'll go from there. So this is where we're at, right? Um, you saw we cut the material to length. Uh, we measured it out. I used a piece of flat edge on one side, drew a straight line, referenced off that line, and then cut on the other side, right? So we should be pretty close to being perfectly squared, right? Um, next, I went and notched out each corner like this, because these are gonna be folded over on one another like that. Um, next, I went to the face of the actual top itself, right? Uh, and then on the edge, I have put my Velcro on there. Now the reason I've done that is because that gives us the perfect 2.5 millimeter to just fold over like this. And stitching isn't gonna be so much of an issue, right? Um, so you'll also notice that on this corner, I don't know if you can see, this corner doesn't have Velcro on it. And that's because we are going to fold this in first and that over second. And there we go, that's where the Velcro meets. So we don't wanna go through two additional layers of Velcro just seems like a whole lot of mission, right? So um, we've just left a little bit of gap, easy way to do that. I just folded it over like that, scribed the line, and then only start my Velcro from that point there. So um, next up, we're going to get um, the double-sided cotton tape on the back here. We're gonna fold it over on itself like that, stick it all down, and then once that's done, we're gonna go through and stitch it on this edge here. So we got all of the edges folded in, the Velcro is on, everything is almost ready for stitching. The only last thing we need to do is make the cutouts on the edges for where the roll bar itself actually runs in. So we just need to put the measurements in, get the cutouts done, and then we can carry on from there. I just quickly went outside to go and check if my eyeball measurements were correct and so good. Um, so next up we're gonna go through and stitch all of the velcro to the actual material on the folded over side. So let's get down to that now. decided to not record correctly when I was doing the next few clips so please bear with me while I do some voiceovers trying to explain as best as what I can as to what I was actually doing um, or what I was saying at the time of filming the clip so let's go so in this clip I'm just explaining how we're going around the edge of the bed itself with a straight edge just to clean up the edge itself um, we want proper adhesion of the velcro to the edge so we need to make that as clean as possible so in the next clip we're just going to start getting everything cleaned up to get that stuck down if required we will use pop rivets to stick everything down if we see the stickiness is not acceptable
So first off, I apologize for the camera busy turning constantly. Uh, it seems that every time I jump on the bucky or move, it just keeps rotating from side to side. So uh, apologize to anyone who had a little bit of uh, motion sickness there. Ignore the mess that's on going on in the background, but please, if you are going to be doing this on your car, only use a straight edge if you do not care about the paintwork on your car. This van itself used to have a canopy on the back, which was actually siliconed in place around the perimeter. That's why we used the straight edge to pull the silicone off. And then after that, we went through with the sanding, sanding block just to get a coarse surface to, add, to promote adhesion between the surface itself and the back of the tape it's also. Next, we went around with a little bit of Prepsol engine degreaser to get any greases off the sides and we went through and stuck down the Velcro itself. I'm realizing now that the Velcro is also quite stuck on there, so I don't think pop rivets at this point are gonna be necessary. So what we're first gonna do here is apparently wave the top around. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, um, but we, like I said, we don't need pop rivets because, like I said, it, it seems as though the grip level of the actual tape is quite strong, especially on the prep surface that we've now created. So here we're just going to keep the bed of the truck the way it is, just to give an example of how a real life situation, and we're going to get the actual cover installed. And there we have it. We have the completed tonneau cover. Um, as you can see, it is quite strong. Look at me slap it and pull up the Velcro. So I know you guys all just came here for the sound of the Velcro itself, so enjoy it. Oh, one more time. Oh, that's the, that's the money shot right there. <laughs> okay, so a few takeaways from what we've learned here. Um, first thing that I would suggest is if you can find a double-sided or sorry, sticky-sided Velcro, I would recommend getting that um, because it does help a lot when you're busy building the actual cover itself, um, both on the side of the bed itself, as well as on the side of the actual top itself it makes using it actually really easy and as i said it is really strong to actually stick down on there second thing is do not take a straight edge to your paint if you love it just just keep that one in mind and don't say i didn't warn you another thing is if you are using your wife's or mother's sewing machine for this project or even if it's your own if, if you just love that sewing machine i would suggest being quite careful uh, in taking this task on possibly using eyelets to save yourself in the future because I think I went through a total of about three or four needles they just kept breaking and going through the issue was the actual tape itself getting stuck even though it is a, a sew through tape uh, you're supposed to use some weird type of soap to prevent it from actually sticking so 
I would suggest that. Um, another thing that I just said in the video earlier was that we will be in the future installing the steel bar underneath just to give it a little bit of curvature so that the water runoff can work correctly. Um, here again, I'm just emphasizing the fact that we don't need the rivets, but if I do ever get to a point where I realize that we do need the rivets, it won't be a very big job. It's just pull it back, drill some holes through and put the rivets right through. Um, another thing that I would suggest is measuring, right? Measuring once, measuring twice, measuring three times, especially when we get to the area when we're working at the back by the roll cage itself. Now, the roll cage itself, we measured inwards from the outer edge of the actual top itself. Now, when we start cutting and trying to actually apply it there, you'll see in a clip a little bit later on that we did start moving away from the roll bar itself. Um, now, this is naturally because of tolerances that weren't uh, accounted for. Um, but when we did the test fit the night before, the thing was that we couldn't hold it down on the one side and pull it straight to the other side. And by that point it was already cut. So here in the clip, you can actually see what I'm talking about. There is the gap. Um, so this isn't going to cause much issue, but that will be a point where water will be able to get in, right? Uh, so in future, we might be adding in surrounds on the side that will hug the actual side of the roll bar itself. So yeah, all in all, this was quite a cheap exercise. This cost us in total in rands, 422 rand. That's roughly 30 to 35 dollars. Um, this is all common stuff that you can get at basically any um, fabric shop. So this isn't a difficult task to do and it took us in total probably around four hours on the first day and about three hours on the second day so seven hours in total to get this all done and i think the payoff is quite good considering what we get at the end of the day also don't forget to hit that like button subscribe you know comment at the bottom helps out with the algorithm a lot you know small channel trying to grow anyways thank you love you much bye